Welcome to the Dignity Health Cancer Institute. I'm Carrie Peterson, a nurse practitioner. I will be reviewing general information about chemotherapy and immunotherapy and what to expect on the first day of treatment. A little about our Cancer Institute. In 2015, Dignity Health St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center began operating a new award-winning state-of-the-art outpatient cancer center in downtown Phoenix, Arizona. In 2020, Dignity Health opened a campus at St. Joseph's Westgate Medical Center in Glendale, Arizona. Everyone here at the Cancer Institute is committed to supporting you and your loved ones with compassion and comprehensive care throughout your journey. These are the addresses and phone numbers for our downtown and Westgate locations. The day of your infusion. Please plan to arrive 15 minutes prior to your scheduled time. This allows you time to park, grab a drink at our cafe and head up to infusion. If you're going to be late for your appointment, please call the infusion center and let them know. We have chair times and if they know you are coming, they will hold your chair time for you. At the downtown location, the second floor is where the infusion center, lab, registration, and outpatient pharmacy are located. As you prepare for your first day of treatment, it is a good idea to have someone drive you to and from the Cancer Institute. You're not sure how you're going to feel after your treatment, and it is always a good idea to have safe transportation. Arrange childcare for the full day. Children under the age of 18 are not allowed in infusion. Blood tests may be needed before most infusion treatments. Women of childbearing age 55 and younger will have a pregnancy test at least monthly. Eat a light snack or meal before you arrive. Unless your oncologist specifically tells you, you do not have to fast before you have labs drawn. You may bring snacks or meals. We do provide a lunchbox for the patient only on treatment days. Make sure we have an updated list of all medications and dosing. Bring your pill bottles to your appointment. Schedule for infusion day. Arrive at the cancer center. Register at the registration desk in infusion. You will get blood work either in infusion or the lab. If you have a port or a pick line, please go to infusion. If you will be getting an injection or IV, go to the lab. Either wait for results in infusion waiting room or go to your doctor's appointment. When it's infusion time, we will get your weight on the scale, even if you weighed in the clinic upstairs, and we get your height once a year. You will sit in the chair and the nurses will check your port or pick line and make sure there is blood return. Then the nurses will start your pre-medications for your chemotherapy or immunotherapy. Then your infusion of your chemotherapy or immunotherapy will begin. As you can see, there is approximately two hours between getting here and starting your treatment. Things to do while you're waiting. We offer free music and movies on iPads. However, you cannot log into your own Netflix or Amazon account. But we do have complimentary Wi-Fi. Please ask your nurse for details. We have warm blankets. For your comfort, you're welcome to bring your own blankets if that will make you comfortable. Bring any electronic devices, books, magazines for your personal use. Wear comfortable clothing and removable shoes. And you're welcome to bring your own ear pods or headphones. Patients with a chest port should wear an open neck or a button up shirt. Patients with a pick line or that need an IV in the arm should wear a short sleeve shirt or a sleeveless shirt. Types of treatment. Chemotherapy is a drug that is used to kill cancer cells. It can be used with radiation and or surgery. It can be given through the vein, by mouth, an injection, or on the skin. Immunotherapy is a drug that helps your body's immune system fight the cancer. Hormone therapy is a drug that prevents the cancer from getting the hormones that they need to grow. Each type of treatment can have potential side effects during administration. Even people getting the same treatment have different side effects. 
The infusion nurse will provide specific instructions on your first day of treatment. While you are getting infusion, there are times when your body can have a hypersensitivity reaction. Your body is not used to the medications we give you. This can happen at any time during your treatment. It does not necessarily mean that you are allergic to the medication we give you. Most of the time, if you have a reaction, we stop the medication. At times, we give you supportive medication and can restart and finish your treatment. It is important for you to notify infusion staff if you are feeling different. Some common symptoms are rash or itching of your skin, swelling of the face or lips, feeling flushed, red, or warm, pain in your stomach, back, or chest, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, difficulty with swallowing or speaking, dizziness or lightheadedness, developing a headache or double vision. If you have any stinging, pain, redness, or swelling around the infusion site, or you just don't feel right. Once treatment is completed, collect all of your personal items to take back home. Use the bathroom before you leave. Schedule your next appointment before you leave if you do not already have an appointment scheduled. Stop at the outpatient pharmacy and pick up any medications for home use before leaving. This is at our Phoenix campus only. Have someone available to drive you home. Chemotherapy by mouth. Take the pills only the way your doctor or nurse advised. Pills should not be crushed, split, broken, or chewed. Store the medication safely as directed. Side effects need to be reported to your nurse navigator. Safe handling of oral chemotherapy. Keep pills away from children, pets, and pregnant women. Understand whether to take your medication with or without food or water. Know what foods, drinks, or activities should be avoided. Know whether any of your other medications will be safe to take together at the same time of the day. Understand how to properly dispose of leftover medication and wash your hands well before and after handling the pills. Labs. Before most treatment, you will have labs drawn. This helps your oncologist decide if it is safe to give you treatment that day. It alerts us to any side effect or complication that may arise during your treatment. Some elements of your blood that we look at are red blood cells, platelets, white blood cells. Red blood cells deliver oxygen throughout the body. A low red blood cell count is called anemia. A low red blood cell count will decrease the oxygen carrying cells that your body needs. Symptoms of anemia are shortness of breath, weakness, dizziness, fainting, and extreme tiredness. Platelets are small, colorless cell fragments in our blood that form clots and stop or prevent bleeding. Platelets are made in our bone marrow, the sponge-like tissue inside of our bones. Low platelets are called thrombocytopenia. A low platelet count will decrease blood clotting and put you at higher risk of bleeding. Symptoms of low platelets are bleeding, bruising, or tiny red or purple dots that appear on the skin that may look like a rash. White blood cells are part of the body's immune system. They help the body fight infection and other diseases. They move through the blood and tissue throughout your body looking for foreign invaders, otherwise known as microbes, such as bacteria, viruses, parasites, and fungi. When they find them, they launch an immune attack. Low white blood cell count, or neutrophils, is called neutropenia. When your white blood cell and neutrophil counts are low, your body does not have enough to fight off infection, and this can be dangerous. A low neutrophil count and a low white blood cell count will increase the risk of you developing an infection. Your provider may order a medication that will tell your body to make white blood cells. Kidney and liver function. There are blood tests to evaluate how well the kidneys are working. They are called creatinine, estimated glomerular filtration rate, 
or EGFR, and blood urea nitrogen, or BUN. There are blood tests to evaluate liver function, alanine transaminase, or ALT, aspartate amniotransferase, which is AST, albumin, and bilirubin. Electrolytes help tell us hydration and nutrition status. These are important electrolytes to function of muscles, heart, and brain. They are sodium, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. We often get questions from patients about when to call. We have some general guidelines on when to call. However, you can call us anytime. There are physicians on call nights, weekends, and holidays. Urgent calls can go to 602-406-8222. Place an immediate phone call day or night to your cancer care team if you notice any of the following symptoms. A fever of 100.4 or higher, chills with or without a fever, that can mean possible infection, unable to eat food, drink fluids or take medication, any unusual bleeding or bruising. If you are having difficulty breathing, chest pain, discomfort, jaw pain, tingling in your arms, call 911. For non-emergent symptoms that can usually wait until business hours, call the clinic nurse navigator. Sore mouth, throat, gums or tongue, swelling anywhere on your body, constipation lasting longer than three days, new or increasing pain and discomfort, numbness and tingling in your hands, feet, or mouth, nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea, any other changes in your health that may concern you. Infection. We talked about the white blood cell count and how if your white blood cells are low, you are at risk for a serious infection. This is why we want you to monitor for signs and symptoms of an infection. They are a fever of 100.4 or higher and or chills, shortness of breath, redness, soreness, swelling, warmth with any surgical wounds, redness, soreness, swelling, warmth with a chest port or your pick line, diarrhea or vomiting not relieved with any medications, new sores in your mouth, unusual vaginal discharge or irritation, a stiff neck, new onset of pain, changes in skin or rashes, change in urination, and changes in mental status. Fevers and medications. It is our first reaction to take medication for fever. Do not take ibuprofen or Advil, acetaminophen or Tylenol, or aspirin unless approved by your doctor. These type of medications can lower a fever, but may also hide signs of a more serious problem. You may need to be seen by the care team for possible infection. We get questions about how you can prevent infections. Here are just a few ways to help prevent infection. Avoid crowded places or people who are sick. Do not share food drink cups, utensils, or other personal items. Cook meat and eggs all the way through to kill any germs. I recommend cooking meat and eggs at at least medium. No sushi or raw meat. Carefully wash raw fruits and vegetables. Use gloves for gardening and possibly a mask. Talk to your cancer care center team before having a flu shot any vaccination or immunization. Tips for home. Wash your hands often and well. Stay as clean as possible. Our bodies get rid of medication through our urine and feces. Because of this, for the first three days after treatment, we recommend that both men and women should sit on the toilet to use it. This will decrease the risk of splashing. When you are finished, close the lid, flush the toilet twice, and wash your hands with soap and water. This reduces the risk of exposing others to medication. Take home medications only as prescribed for nausea, pain, and bowel care. Call us if you have any questions. Hydrate by drinking plenty of liquids. 
Minimum of 64 ounces of water daily. Limit the intake of caffeine. Ask your oncologist if you can drink alcohol. Be active and balance rest with activity. Oral and mouth care. Practice good oral hygiene and care daily. Use a soft bristle toothbrush. Rinse your mouth after meals with baking soda, salt, and warm water. Avoid commercial mouthwashes. Your cancer center doctor must approve any dental work and any teeth cleanings. Skin care. Avoid activities that may cause any cuts, scrapes, or burns. Cleanse any wound or bandage and watch it for infection. Avoid handling pet droppings, including cleaning fish tanks, bird cages, and litter boxes. And moisturize your skin with lotion. Eat freshly prepared foods. Wash all fruits and vegetables. Try to eat small, frequent meals. Choose healthy, high nutrient, high protein foods. Ask to speak with a registered dietitian if you have any questions. Sexual activity and intimacy. This is a large part of our relationships. Many of the treatments and medications we give can cause sexual dysfunction. We ask you to prevent pregnancy or attempts to conceive during your treatment. Do not have sexual intercourse if the white blood cell count or platelets are too low. If you are allowed to be sexually active, use a condom and a lubricant. Ask your provider for a referral to our sexual health and intimacy clinic. Not everyone will have every side effect. Know what to watch for, when and why to call the clinic. Know how to manage the side effects safely. Some patients can have problems caused by cancer treatment, but some common side effects are fever, anemia, bleeding, infection, nausea, fatigue, constipation, diarrhea, hair loss, mouth sores, depression, and pain. Our physicians and nurse practitioners round at St. Joseph's Hospital and Medical Center. There is an oncology floor at St. Joe's, Tower 6. We make every attempt for you to be located on that floor. If you are admitted to another hospital, please call nursing staff and let them know. Urgent calls after regular business hours, holidays, and weekends will be directed to the answering service and forwarded to the on-call cancer center doctor. Call 911 if you are having an emergency situation. 24-hour phone number, day, night, holidays is 602-406-8222. Please keep this information somewhere close. Place it in a safe place for easy access. Save it in your cell phone, post it on your refrigerator, and keep it near your home phone. Resources. We have a social worker. She can help with transportation, resources, and financial resources. The American Cancer Society is a great organization for information and community resources. Advanced Directives There is a state website that can help you fill out paperwork. If you need assistance, our social worker can help you. Registered Dietitian We have a registered dietitian to help you with nutrition during your treatment. Sexual Health and Intimacy Clinic Ask your provider for a referral to this clinic. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and allowing us to care for you on your cancer journey.